is to you God's word, which is his comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter his word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, P.O. Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703-036359, 0703-768119. Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org. Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. I have a greater task for you. And the first issue that I sense we must seek to understand is located in the passage, Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49. And I would like to ask you to note verse 5, verse 6. I told you that we are going to be looking at the twin passages. Isaiah 42 and Isaiah 49. And for this night, we're going to highlight the two issues that we saw God raising in the passages. Isaiah 49 verse 5 and verse 6. And now says the Lord that formed me from my mother's womb, from the womb, to be his servant, to bring Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to restore the preserved of Israel. I will also give you for a light to the Gentiles, and thou mayest be my salvation unto the end of the earth. In chapter 42, verse 6, I have I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness, and I will hold your hand and I will keep you, and I will give you for a covenant of the people, for a light to the Gentiles. Hallelujah. But in the particular version in which we picked our theme text, you find it in the Good News, and Good News chapter 49, and verse 6 says, The Lord said to me, I have a greater task for you, my servant. Not only will you restore to greatness the people of Israel who have survived, but I will also make you a light to the nations so that all the world may be saved. So that all the world may be saved. I have a greater task for you. But you know, as we began to look at the word of God, it became a very big issue for me as if in the manifestation of that greater task, He said, I will also make you a light to the nations so that all the world may be saved. We have deliberately decided to study in our Bible studies 
the salt of the earth and the light of the world. And I perceive that for today, we only were able to deal with the salt of the earth. Looking forward to God that he will give us space and understanding to look at what he meant when he said you are the light of the world. But two words that are jumping to me as God said I have a greater task for you. And immediately he said I will make you a light to the nations. Does it mean that being a light is a great task? It's a greater task? What does it mean when God is saying, I will make you a light? King James says, I will give you as light to the nations. What does that imply for us? Because again, as we kept praying and pleading with God, give us understanding of what you are saying. And we are beginning to have insight into what is God talking about. I would like to, you know, paraphrase some few issues very quickly in scripture so that we can have a takeoff point waiting for how God will be leading us to go on. Do you remember that the book of Genesis when the Bible said God in the beginning made the heavens and the earth immediately in verse 2 the Bible said and the earth was chaotic. The earth was restless. The earth was engulfed in darkness. Darkness covered the whole place and made it an empty waste. Darkness that came to engulf the earth only came to destroy it, to waste it, and to make it useless. And when God was going to respond to deal with that matter, we heard him say, let there be light. But you see, as you read your Bible, like we studied for several times, we noted that when God said, let there be light in Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, he was not talking about sunlight. He was not talking about moonlight. He was, talking, was not talking about electric light. <clears throat> he was not talking about touch light. Because later on, when you go later in the chapter from verse 14, you will discover that God created the sun, the moon, the starlight, and all of that. Which meant that God's solution to the matter of darkness is light. And as if the only way for the earth not to go into a decay is if there is light that will confront darkness. But as we go further in the word of God, it became clear to us and I want you to follow me about because when this person said, I will also make you a light to the nations so that my salvation 
may reach the ends of the earth. It meant then that, and if God is saying, that is a greater task. That is a task. You see, as soon as the Holy Spirit is saying, I have a greater task for you. I will make you a light unto the nations. My heart began to, you know, shrink. It meant that God is calling us unto doing something to deal with darkness that is engulfing our generation. It means that God is planning to rise finally to deal with darkness in every strata where he will be intending to get us to do this task. When the scripture said it's a light thing for you to restore the preserved children of Israel and to bring them to their heritage, that that one is a light thing. There's a bigger task. I want you to be light unto the nations so that my salvation might reach the ends of the earth. Ordinarily, I would have thought that God is saying, I want you to go and preach. Maybe that would have been understandable. Maybe that would have been easy for us to start talking about, yes, we need to do this, we need to do that. But I hear God saying, a greater task is for me to make you a light to the nations. A light that will subdue darkness in your generation. A light that will shine so much that the powers of darkness will not be able to comprehend it. And the way the Holy Spirit is calling it a task. A greater task. It's making me to say, okay, God, can you please give us understanding? Can you please deliver us from being vague and speaking generally as if it is something that we have known before? Can you allow us to have a clear picture of what you want to do in our day. Can you allow us to have an insight into the practicality of what lies ahead of us as your people? So this night, I would like to trust God no matter how briefly we can that he will give us insight to what he is talking about. Now, when you go to John chapter 1, I want all of you to go to John chapter 1. In John chapter 1, the Bible began to introduce a matter. And this matter Our brother Dennis began to refer to it in the morning. But within the space that the Lord granted us in the morning, it was only for us to cry to God. But the Holy Spirit began to point at a matter which I don't want us to lose out upon. Are you in John chapter 1? From verse 1. It said, 
in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God now before I go on reading that so that you will not be wondering what are we talking about you will notice that verse 40 quickly say and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth so between verse 1 and verse 14 what is that word that the bible is talking about eh the lord jesus christ but i now want you to go back and let us now read from verse 2 the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made. That as far as this Jesus is concerned, he was there right with the Father in the beginning. And that actually the Word was with God and the Word was God. That when we talk of Jesus, essentially he is God. He is one with God. Everything that was made was made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. I thought that that should be very, very simple for me to pass on to you so that we can go. Can I go on from there? Eh? All right. All things were made by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him, verse 4, in him was life. And the life was what? Was the light of all men. So we are beginning to see something quick. That the light that we are going to be speaking about is also not going to be electric light or touch light. It's going to be what kind of light? A life that is light. Which means when God is saying, I will make you a light unto the nations. Which means God is saying, I will give you a life that is light. That can subdue what? Darkness. I will give you a life that has capacity to shine the light. And to subdue darkness. So that those who sit in darkness. Light may spring unto them. And they may be delivered. Please follow. And the light shines. In darkness. And the darkness. Does not do what? Comprehended it not. Other version says, The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness cannot swallow it. The light shineth in darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. I want you to please hear me very well. You see, the light 
was not shining where there is light. Where was the light shining? In darkness. And the darkness does not have capacity to do what? To overrun it, to overcome it, to shroud it, or to conquer it. God wants to raise men and women with a life that is light that wherever you throw them in the midst of darkness and no matter how thick no matter how aggressive that darkness is that darkness can only bow it will not overcome it. It's a task. It's a task that God is calling us into. God is longing in this end time to raise men with a kind of life that is strong enough to confront darkness in every area and darkness will not comprehend it. Please hear me. I pray that God will give you understanding. I want you to know that as far as we can see and as far as we have now experienced darkness and the God of this world which the Bible refer to as the prince of darkness is aggressive in engulfing every area of human life in darkness. He wants to engulf the judicial system of this world in what? In darkness. I am wishing that I could ask you to join me to pray. There's a prayer an urgent prayer. The church, the Dutch Reformed Church, the church that brought NKST to us in South Africa, they have sat now and they have approved that it is not wrong for the gay men to marry men and that they should be bona fide member of the church and any preacher who is preaching against them should apologize in fact the entire synod issue you know a communique to apologize to the gay movement that they have uh, they have uh, And one of the brothers that was standing and preaching the gospel and refused and said, that's not where our father started from. is charged to court now. In the next few days, he will be appearing in court for speaking against homosexuality on the pulpit. That was a church that Andrew Murray preached at. That was a congregation that sent missionaries to this place. A 
and the judicial system is already biased because several people that were in there they themselves are victims of this matter and if you look the aggression of darkness to envelope our generation is not a small matter And God is saying, the light shineth in the darkness. And the darkness cannot comprehend, overcome, overwhelm, engulf, envelope it. And I hear God say, I have a greater task for you. You have done well inside the church hall. You have done well trying to, to bring back the preserved of Israel. But there's something else that you must do for me. So that my salvation can get to the ends of the earth. I will also make you a light to the nations. I want all of you to please listen deliberately tonight. I want you to prayerfully listen to what the Holy Ghost is talking about. I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will we, we, we breathe upon this and release something to your inner man that will make you to want to respond to God in a definite way. It is not just judiciary, even theological education where pastors are trained. Darkness has come upon it. Darkness does not want to spare the pulpit. Darkness is aggressively taking over the economy of the world. Any of you that have dared into the businesses in this world, then you will know that as soon as you step in there, there's a shout everywhere and say, this territory is under a different control. What is this greater task? I will also make you a light to the nations. Now, look at the word of God coming as we are reading it. And the light shineth in darkness and the darkness does what? Comprehended it not. Then in verse 6, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which does what? Which lighted every man that comes into the world. If we can just stop at that. 
you will remember that towards the end of the testimony of John concerning John the Baptist in John 5 he said John was a bright a bunny and a shining light he himself but the Holy Spirit is saying he was not that light who is that light that the Bible is talking about it's Jesus and that it is that light that lightens every man that comes to the world. Which means if you were born on the face of the earth, if Jesus will not give you light, what are you basically? Eh? You are darkness. And darkness can never overcome darkness. Darkness cannot overcome or stop darkness. Darkness can only be consumed in darkness. But God is saying, I will also make you a light to the nations so that my salvation can get to the ends of the earth. On one count, I would have thought that Isaiah 49 is just talking about Jesus. But as I kept reading the scripture and I kept hearing what Jesus himself began to say to the disciples that he called and I came to that point when he said you are the light of the world. As if I am bringing you to give you to put something in you for you to go and do something for God in your generation. I will make you a light to the nations. This matter of light, it's looking to me as a very fundamental matter in the heart of God as a strategy to deal with the power of darkness. Because throughout the ministry of Jesus, for example, if you turn to John chapter 9, Jesus said, as long as I'm in this world, what am I? I am the light of the world. And anyone who follows me will not do what? Will not walk in darkness. But what will happen to him? He will have what? The light of life. He will have a life that is light. I will give him light. Please go with me because I just want to establish this matter in scripture before we begin to draw issues. In 2 Corinthians, please all of you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I would like you to quickly read from verse 3 but if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost sir 
whenever you talk about gospel, the first understanding is that the gospel is preached. Abi? So the question that he raised there should not have been if our gospel be hid, what should have been the way he should have said it? Eh? If our gospel is not hard, or if our gospel is not known or understood, but that was not the matter. If our gospel is what? Is hid. If the gospel is hidden. Now read the Bible. It says it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not Less what the light so which means actually the gospel itself ought to be what ought to be the light because the only thing that can deal with darkness is light The only thing that can subdue darkness is light. Darkness is not affected by shouting. Darkness is not affected by sound. Darkness is not affected by noise. Darkness can continue to do its work as long as there is no light. The kind of man that God wants to raise to bring to pass his desired counsel for this end time must not just be those who preach. Who make noise? God is looking for men and women. Who does what? Who does what? Who shines the light that is life? Let me move first. Fast. I pray that God will give increase to what we are dealing with in the name of Jesus Christ. He has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should do what? Should shine unto them. What will set men free is when the light shines unto them. And what is the devil? What does the devil not want? He does not want that light to shine to them. So what does he do? He blinds them. Excuse me, please. Blindness is not a predicament for sound. Are we together? If anybody has the deformity of blindness. His problem is not sound. His problem is not, is not noise. What is the problem? Light. The prince of darkness does not get afraid of noise. The prince of darkness is not perturbed with much sound. 
It doesn't matter if all of us are making noise. As long as there is no light shining, darkness is not disturbed. It can even come among us and be walking and be shouting with us. He can even be singing along with us. Because it is not singing. It is not shouting. It is not sound. It is not noise. That deals with darkness. What is it that deals with darkness? Light. But this kind of light we are talking about is the light of life. Is the life light. If I can put it like that. So look at what was God's strategy. Verse 5 and verse 6 says, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who commanded the light, To shine out of darkness. Can I ask you, when did God command light to shine out of darkness? Eh? In the beginning. That same God, look at what the Bible says is doing now. God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has done what? Shine in our hearts to do what? To do what? Are you reading your Bible? He has shined in our hearts to do what? To do what? To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You know, as I keep reading the word of God and I keep seeing the kind of thing that these men of old have understood. What they have understood that became the pivot of their own life and their message, I kept wondering whether our own generation has not missed something. He said, he has shined in our hearts. Instead of saying, let there be light, let there be light, he decided, hallelujah, that he will shine. But where? In our heart. To do what? What is Jesus? What is God shining in our heart to do? What is he doing? To give the light. My brother. God wants to give the light. Of the knowledge of the glory of God. In the face of Jesus Christ. By shining in your own heart. As if the crucial matter for the nations, the crucial matter for our communities, the crucial matter for our domains, the crucial matter for our professional colleagues is light. Light that is life. Light that gives, I mean, a light that is shining the light to give the light in the face of Jesus Christ. You know that little passage? If we were to sit down and say, so what does it mean? That God wants to raise a man like you, like me. Who shines the light on the face of Jesus Christ. As if you want to take a photograph. 
you know that flash that when you want to take somebody's photograph there is that flashlight that shines on that face so that you can get it clear that God is looking for brothers is looking for sisters in whom he could shine to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Now, if you read verse 7, but we have this treasure. Excuse me, what is this treasure from the context that we are reading? What is this treasure? Eh? The light that is life is the treasure. Maybe because there is not much of personal study of the word of God. You have generally spoken and said, we have this treasure in an ending vessel. We have this treasure in an ending vessel. And I say, what is the treasure? Do you understand what God calls the treasure? What is the treasure that God is keeping here? the light that shines that deals with darkness. That is the treasure. That is what God is looking to give to the nations. Praise the Lord. If I move away from there, And I go a little further into the discussion that when Paul got to the Ephesian church, what he began to discuss with them. Can I ask you to check it? Ephesians 5. We're going to read verse 6, verse 7. Maybe I should read from verse Verse 3, 4, 5, 6. They are all good passages. But fornication and all uncleanness, covetousness, let it not be once named among you as the comet saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no warmonger, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of God and of Christ. You know that. Let no man deceive you with vain words, with eye standing words. Let no man confuse you and say it doesn't matter. Even if you are even if you are fornicating, you are going to heaven. He is a lie. Let nobody tell you grace settled it. Grace settled it. If I tell you what grace does, you will know that those who are telling you like that, they are liars. And they just want to damn your soul. The Bible said the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men. Is that true? Teaching us to do what? To say no to sin. To deny ungodliness. And to do what? And to live soberly, holily, righteously. Where? In this present world, not when we get to heaven. If anybody tells you that it's when you get to heaven that you will be living holily, is deceiving you. He wants to damage your soul. No matter how popular preachers they are, these are preachers sponsored from hell.
These are people that were deliberate in twisting the word of God. They have troubled the body of Christ enough. They have lured many who are unstable into their fold. But go and check their own lives. Go and check their families. Go and check everything around them. They are simply grappling with darkness. Let no man deceive you with vain words. It is because of these things that the wrath of God is coming upon the children of disobedience. Be not you therefore partakers with them. That is taking me to where we are coming. Verse 8. Are you in verse 8? For you are sometimes what? Now, please read your Bible very well. I know that those who do not understand the setting and the context of scripture, they think it is easier if they add one small word to that Bible verse. What is the word that they would likely had? In they would like to say, you are sometimes in darkness. But that's not what the Bible said. What did the Bible say? You are sometimes what? Darkness. Not just that you are in darkness. You yourself. What were you? You were darkness. The life you carry is an embodiment of darkness. Every man that is not brought to Jesus Christ is not only in darkness. He himself is what? Is darkness. Friend, any man that is not in Christ is in darkness. But not only that is in darkness. Because you see, it is possible for somebody to be in darkness. But the darkness is not in him. That's not what we're talking about. He himself is what? Is darkness. The reason why you are not able to overcome is because what you carry is of the same stock with what is going on there. It said you were sometime darkness. But you will see how he said, but now are you in the light? Is that what he said? Eh? Read your Bible now. Say, but now are you in the light? Is that what he said? What did he say? But now are you light? Please be careful to always read your Bible very well. But now are you light in the Lord? You are sometime darkness. But now a miracle has taken place. You are light in the Lord. So what do you do? Walk as children of light. So which means the essence of conversion is to give you a life that in its essential composition is light. And the Bible did not want us to mince word about this. Neither does he want us to be vague. He decided to explain what he meant. Say because the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. 
proven what is acceptable unto the Lord have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of what? Of darkness. But rather, what do you do? Reprove them. But I want you now to listen. You know, when you said the word reprove, when you saw the word reprove, the ordinary understanding of the word reprove, ordinary understanding is what? Is what? When you say reprove, what does that mean? It means speak. Abi, speak against, speak about, speak to correct. Abi, now, but when you read your Bible closely, you don't reprove darkness by speaking. Darkness can never be reproved by speaking. What is it that reproves darkness? Eh? You see, you read your Bible now. But after, reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which they are done, which are done of them in the secret. But all things that are reproved, how? Are made manifest by what? By the light. For whosoever, whatsoever does make manifest is what? Is light. Before we come to verse 14, is anybody able to help me check verse 13 from any other version? Can you help me check whether there's any version? That could make it a little clearer to you. What are you reading? Living Bible, yes. You are reading verse, verse 13, yes. The light shines in upon what? A uh hand. -huh. And it shows it up. It makes them to see how wrong they really are. What is it that does that? Is it by speaking? No. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. What manifests and exposes and reveals the true nature of darkness is not talking. It's what? It's light. A life that when it goes to an office, no matter how sophisticated the way the people do things, the way they are doing, and you know they are perfected, that you may never be able to know that anything is wrong. But when this life light goes in there, just by shining his own life, what happens now? It begins to reveal, expose the true nature of things. Suddenly, they said, no, this man is exposing us. This man is exposing us. He's not exposing them by talking. How is he exposing them? By shining. And I'm hearing God saying, I have a greater task for you. I have a greater task. I want to make you a light to the nations. I want to make you light that exposes and reveals and manifests the true nature of darkness 
in order to reprove it in order to curb it in order to stop it in order to make it impossible for it to continue to operate how i pray this this night that god will give you courage to say lord even though I do not know how you are going to do it all, I am willing to be used of you. I want to tell you now that it looks as if the church we are quite very comfortable. It looks as if there is no persecution again. And it looks as if everybody is just all right. And I'm wondering, why is darkness very easily relaxed with what we are doing, even though we appear to be many? And the only answer is that these men and women that we are calling Christians, they are the absorbable Christians. They are the ones that can easily be absorbed. Darkness said, let them come, we will absorb them. And give them something they can be doing for themselves. I have a greater task. I will also make you a light to the nations. So verse 14, which is the conclusion and which may be where it might be alright to me for me to stop tonight. He said, wherefore he says, awake thou that just what? That sleep. And arise from the dead. And Christ shall do what? Shall give you light. In that verse 14, as far as the purpose of God is concerned, until you have light to shine, as far as heaven is concerned, you are sleeping or you are dead. You are either sleeping a sleeping giant or a dead who has a name that is alive but is actually as far as the purpose of God is concerned on the face of the earth is dead so when we come back to the word of God what is it that God is saying I want to do I will also make you a light to the nations. I'm going to ask you to stop with me on this. When Isaiah 49 raised that, as you keep studying the prophecies of Isaiah, you will come to chapter 60 when he said, Arise and shine for your light has come. It's about light. He said, Gentiles will come to your light. I don't know how the Lord will help us 
in a short meeting like this to impress upon you that God is saying my need for you on the face of the earth now is to be what? Is to be my light. My strategy for raising you up is to be my light shining in order for darkness to come down. And if you are sleeping, he said, awake, Jesus will give you light. If you are dead, he said, awake, Jesus will give you light. I was thinking that he would say he will give you power. But I realize that actually the power the power that God releases, the power of the Holy Ghost is the power to shine. It's the power to shine and to bring darkness on their knees. And as if God wants to give you the life that is light and take away that natural life that is darkness. I know God is bringing us to something which as we go on studying, it will cause us to understand and to respond to him about in the name of Jesus Christ. But for this night of prayer together, before we rise to go, the Lord Jesus was challenging those few disciples. He said, look, you are the light of the world. And you know, he spoke about it in different ways. I think it was in Luke 11 when he said, no man having light a lamp will keep it under a bushel, but he will look for a lampstand and put it that it may shine and give light to everybody in the house. That as far as God is concerned, he is producing men and women that is light to deal with darkness. We would like to stop at this point, even though we have not come to a place where we could say, now we can rest. But we have come to a place where we can at least begin to pray. I will give you light. I will make you a light to your nation. I will make you a light, a shining light that darkness cannot comprehend. It's a greater task that I want to give you. I know there's going to be an expansion, there's going to be a largeness, there's going, but the essence of that which God is talking about is that there's going to be a shining life light that darkness can no longer comprehend. That if you were supposed to have been relocated to a, 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 a school, a college, a university, God's intention is that there will be an intensity of a life light shining that will subdue darkness in that place. I know what me and you have believed in is that let's just walk there. Let me just be there. Let me do my own work. When I finish, I can go. I will not join their evil thing. I will not be on equally yoke together with darkness. Thank you for all of that. But that's not all that God is demanding. 
God is saying, I will make you a light. I will give you as a light to those Gentiles. To expose darkness until darkness can no longer walk. I'm hearing an aggressive desire in the heart of God. I will also make you a light to the nation to confront the darkness until they surrender. Ordinarily, you have been trained to just live your life and preserve yourself and thank God and run back to where there is light so that we can be here. But God is saying, eh, eh. I will also make you a light to the nations. That my salvation, my deliverance, might go to the ends of the earth. I want men that are bound in darkness, I want them to be released. Those that sat in the region of darkness, I want them to see a great light and be delivered. I want you to be able to say to those that are in prison, go forth. I want you to be able to say to those that are bound with the spirit of death, say, get loose. I desire that as, as I release you, nations that are bound in darkness, they will suddenly see light and say, oh, can I find out, can God do it? Eh? Can God do it even through these earthen vessels? Eh? Can God relocate this treasure in an earthen vessel? In order for his purpose in this time, in this generation, in this nation, in this land to be carried out? Is it possible? Will you like to say, oh God, if this is what you are offering, I don't know how that has been. I don't know how it could be. But I want to believe you for it. I want to see how you, oh God, can carry out what you are talking about. I would like you to join me to pray first. Because I'm coming to a point where I'm saying, God, if this is what you are talking about, first in Nigeria, then it has to be a miraculous intervention. It means then that we are asking for something that we have not, we cannot even anticipate by ourselves. It means we are saying, oh God, this nation can be rearranged and be refocused. And even as I'm saying that, some of you say, ah, can corruption finish in Nigeria? Can we have anything changed? I will also make you a light unto the nations. I would like you to join me to pray. I will pray simple prayer because the body of prayer is that unless God will walk, even the understanding of what the Holy Spirit is talking about can be very vague. But God is going to walk. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. You want to stand up in prayer with me? Let's pray together.
Thank you, Lord Jesus, tonight. Thank you for the opportunity of prayer. Thank you for Jesus who died and rose again. Thank you for the treasure you are talking about. Thank you that in him was life. And the life was the light of all men. And it is this light that lightens the whole, every man that comes into the world. Thank you, Jesus, that you are speaking. You are speaking so deeply that we have come to a point where you are going to give to us a greater task. To become a light to the nations that are groping in darkness. To regions of death. To where the prince of darkness have had sway. To where the kingdom of darkness seem to overrun the place and they seem to be advancing so aggressively to the extent that it's looking as if this is how everything is going to end but Lord we are hearing you tonight I will also make you a light to the nations so that my salvation may get to the ends of the earth. Father, do it in the name of Jesus. Father, translate what you are saying to us into a reality that we cannot doubt again in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Holy Ghost, This engulfing darkness, this present darkness has caught our young people, has engulfed puppets, has sneaked into curriculum of education, and has saved the whole world have ganged against the Lord and your king. But you are saying to us that we will soon sing a new song. Yeah. You are saying to us that mountains will soon melt in our presence. Father, Honor your word with us in the name of Jesus Christ. Be it unto us, O oh God, according to your word. Be it unto us, O oh God, according to thy word in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, this night, I'm going to read back to you what you have said to us. And I want to ask you, oh God, tonight that beyond what we could explain or think, do your work in the midst of your people in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon you, 
and his glory shall be seen upon you. And the Gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. Father, honor your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let our light come, O God. You said the Lord shall give you light. I plead tonight that the, the small and the big among us give us light in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you will do, God, for this treasure, you said, Arise, O thou that sleepest, and awake those that are dead. For the Lord will give you life.